You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. I hope you would get this message and stay on it again and again. And I hope it is okay, dear. Make sure you get them the messages. Get me even this one ready tonight and put it on YouTube. So they can go and get it there. They should get it on YouTube. Stay on it. I, 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 I wish I have a lot of time. Okay, show Proverbs 3 verse 16. Let me tidy one or two scriptures on, on, on this one. Then I can move. Can you spare me 15 minutes and I will close the service? Can you do me that? Okay. Look at this. The value for literacy and the value for knowledge and wisdom is what I want to show you now. For those of you who think money is your problem, it's not first money. It's what you know about money. It's what you don't know about money that is your problem. Look at it. It's a length of days is in her right hand. Who is the right hand here? It's wisdom. If you read up down, you will see it's wisdom we're talking about. So length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. Rich is money. But what do you get for getting money? It's called wisdom. Another word is literacy. Financial literacy. Get the software and it will drive the hardware. Hardware without software is just a table decoration. Your laptop is a hardware. If there's no software, it's just good for the table. You can't do nothing with it. What drives the hardware is a software. What drives money, physical cash, is literacy. Your knowledge about it. Your knowledge about how it works. So if you don't know when the dollar is up, you don't know when the dollar is down. Some of you don't know when to invest and when not to invest. Hmm. Literacy. Proverbs 8 verse 18. Let me back it up a little on the issue of literacy. Riches and honor are with me. That's wisdom talking. He said riches and honor are with me. That's literacy talking. What literacy is telling you is that if you get me, you will get riches and honor. And he says enduring riches and righteousness. So verse 19. My fruit is better than gold. It's a literacy. The fruit of it is better than gold. Yes, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. So, rich literacy has revenue. A man who has literacy has money. That's what he's saying. He said, my revenue than choice silver. Verse 20. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice. Look at verse 21 now. He said that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth. I may cause those people who love wisdom, who love knowledge, who will sit down and study about money, who will sit down and study how money works, who will sit down and study about investment, who will sit down and study about debt management and cancellation, who will sit down and study about all those things. There are wisdoms in those areas. People who will sit down and study it and practice it and say that, that, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. They are banks. That's what he's saying. Your treasuries, your bank account will be fat if you have financial literacy. He said your accounts will never be any more empty. You will bind a lot of devils and ignore the ones inside you. The devil of illiteracy. Thank you, ma. Amen. Are we together here? Oh, because of time, I can stay on this issue of literacy. Maybe on Sunday, on Sunday, I will talk a little. I'm still on the financial thing. So on Sunday, we are going to delve a little more into financial literacy. Ooh, I'm going to be showing you some dangerous research centers and all that. Some trends now in the economic world and what you should be looking out for now, what you should be projecting, what you should be studying, where the world is going now, money-wise. I'll be even showing you 
Hey, places where if you get money and invest in it with small capital, you are a millionaire within a few months to come. Number three, because of time. Solve problems. Hmm. It's not enough to have the wealth mentality and be going around and be saying, I'm a rich man. I'm a billionaire. You will die small. <laughs> I'm big, man. I've got money. I'm a big boy. I'm a billionaire. You will die small like that. If you like, go and read all the books in Cambridge. If you like, go and read all the books in Harvard. If you like, go and read all the books in Harvard, in Oxford. If you like, go and read all the books in Preston. If you like, go and read all the books in the world's best university. Until you find a need and meet it, you will not have money. Wealth is the reward you get for solving a problem. Money is simply the certificate of appreciation for a need, a need met. Solve problems. And I want to even shock you that the whole purpose for the creation of man was for solving problems. I prove it to you by showing you. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. This is why God created human beings. Created Adam in the first place. It was a soft problem. Look at 2 verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man, uh, the man that he created, and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and do what? To tend and do what? To tend and do what? Did he create it to be eaten? Did he create man to be going up and down? Who was the purpose for the creation of human beings? To do what? To tend. There's another translation that says to walk and keep it. Another word for this ten is to walk. The purpose for the creation of man is to be productive, is to have a walk, is to do something to earn a living. Hmm. Let me even give you an example using Jesus, your Savior. Watch him. He was one of the one of the successful men in his time. You think he was a poor man? He was not. He was successful. Why was he? There was no day he was not meeting needs. Every day he was solving problems. You are either solving spiritual problems or you are solving physical problems. You are either solving felt needs or you are solving real needs. Hmm. Felt needs are tangible needs. Tang things people cannot do without physically and all that. Real needs are spiritual needs. Like, you know, when a man is having a problem in his spiritual life and I'm dealing with that, that's solving a spiritual problem. That's real need. A man is not born again and I administer salvation. That's real need. But felt need now are needs that borders on your finances, borders on your food, clothes, what to drive, what to wear, house rent. All those are felt needs. And then if you want to be prosperous, you must find yourself doing one of these things or two of them. You must be able to create wealth by touching people's lives. You must be able to create wealth by solving people's problems. Everybody you see in this city has a problem. You, you need to find out how you can be the one to solve it. Everybody you see walking around has a need, one or two needs or even more. You need to learn the techniques and the technology for solving the problems. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Now watch this. In the issue of creating wealth, you must solve you must solve problems. You can't be sitting down on the roof of your house and say money come to me now. You don't come. You must find something that people need and offer it. Some of them are tangible needs. Others are intangible. I give an example of intangible needs. Services. They are tangible needs, products. When I'm selling a product, I'm meeting a tangible need. When I'm offering a service, I'm meeting an intangible need. Intangible needs or intangible commodities are commodities you cannot touch. You can't see them, but they are actually solving a problem. For instance, barbing. If I'm barbing somebody's hair, I'm offering a service and I'm being paid for that. Okay, I'm talking now with the mic. I'm selling something you don't know. What am I selling? knowledge there are billionaires in the world who have become billionaires simply by teaching by communicating a lecturer who is teaching in a class is selling information he's an infopreneur he's selling information and then he's making money if i design a school now 
What am I selling? Knowledge. If I design a restaurant, the beauty restaurant, what am I selling? Food and all those stuff. Maybe fruits and that's tangible. If I'm selling clothes, I'm selling tangible commodities. If I'm selling ideas, there are people who make money by selling ideas. Yes. You call them consultants. They are business consultants. They are financial consultants. A lawyer is selling services. Legal services. A doctor also sells services. A pharmacist sells products. Drugs and all that. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes, so wealth is not possible until you solve a problem. Human beings are problem oriented. Anywhere you see people, there are problems there. And then problems are not bad things. Problems are simple equations of life that offering services or product just dismantles. Problems are needs. Have you heard of the word problem solving? Uh-huh. For instance, if you did mathematics, I hope you know equations are problems. Did we solve this problem? Another word for problem is equation. Problem doesn't mean bad thing. <laughs> problem doesn't mean a, 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 a negative thing like most of you think it to be. Problem is simply a need. Somebody has a need. Just identify it and then solve. And you get money for solving the problem. It can be anything. But you must have ability and wisdom to spot problems and solve them. Look around you. Look around your city. Look around your state. What is the problem you've identified? People are building houses. They may have the money to pay contractors to build it. Or they may have the money to build the house. But they are not the contractors that will build it. A contractor has to build it. He makes money doing that. And our person has money to build a house, but when he finishes building the house, he doesn't have the skills on painting it. You who have skills of painting, you offer your painting skills, you make money doing that. Are you see, that's a problem you have solved. That's a problem you've solved. You won't be here listening to me if I don't have solution to your problem. I'm solving a problem now. I hope you know that. The book you're writing with now is a solution to a problem. Imagine coming here now using your pen to write in your hand. How does it work? But do you know that there are notes I, I took as far back as 10 years ago? I still have them. There are notes I took in my primary school. I still have till now. Till now, I can show you some if you want. Primary school. If somebody did not design that notebook, how would I have kept record of what I did more than 30 years ago in the archive? Anything you see people use is something that was given out of a problem identified. Aeroplane came as a result of somebody's identifying that human beings need to fly from one part of the world to the other. And there are some places you cannot go by road. And they spotted that problem and created a solution to it. The shoe you're wearing is a solution somebody gave to a problem. This microphone I'm using now is a solution in my hand. Somebody gave it out of spotting a problem. Imagine going to the stadium now to go and talk. And then there are maybe 100,000 people in a crusade. How do I come out without microphone and speak, without speaker and speak? What will happen to my voice? If no matter the loudness of my voice, maybe it's only the person by my side that can hear me. What about the rest of the crowd? But with the aid of a microphone and the aid of a speaker, I can speak. Now you are in this place, there's fine, there's air condition. It solves the problem of sweating. Your pen solves the problem of writing. Your clothes solves the problem of nakedness. Imagine you all came here naked. What's going to happen here, my friends? Oh, you're carrying nice haircuts. A clip has solved that problem. See your fine beards. Why is it not looking like that of Amadioha? Oh, Gugu. You have a chair to sit on. That's a problem that has been solved. What, other, what if all of us were standing here? 
or we're lapping each other. I have a projector through which I am showing you the scripture. It saves me time of flipping through my Bible. That's a problem that is being solved. Somebody designed the projector, the laptop, and he's doing that job. Look around you. Everything you see is a solution to a problem. We are here now. If it's raining out there, we are not being touched by the rain because there's a roof overhead. Somebody solved that problem. Find something and contribute to your world. You will never again be poor. Find a way to be a contributor, not a collector. Find a way to be a producer and not a consumer. You will never again be poor. You go to your house now, you will lie down on a bed. Somebody is making money off that. By providing a bed for you, he's making money. You're using phones. Somebody's making money through that. You use airtime. Somebody's making money through that. You can't make calls now without airtime. You're using data. One guy is just chilling off in his parlor now and money is flowing to the account. He's he just flowing without working, without just flowing. The guy can choose to wake up tomorrow morning and sleep all he cares. Every minute, I wonder how that man's phone keeps beeping with alerts. Somebody sent me, some people sent me airtime today. I got airtime, yes. But as they were sending me airtime, another person was getting a lot. If you start thinking like this, you will never be poor. The problem is that you just think magic will happen one day and you arrive where you are going to. It doesn't work like that. Life is deliberate. Say that to your neighbor. Say, life is deliberate. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. Very, very deliberate. You must be intentional if you want to break free from your current status. Solve problems. Oh, there are more scriptures I have to show you, but I would not because of time. Okay, show Proverbs 12, 11. I'm going to rush it now and I'm out. I have five more minutes and I'm, all, I'm out of here. Proverbs 12, 11. Can you be fast? He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread. Can you see that? He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread. Bread is money. Bread is your daily bread. Your daily income. Bread is your victuals. Your victuals. Hmm? I hope you know that. The reason for work is so you can have something to put on the table. Hmm? So he who tills his land Tilly your land, there is working. You have to find a field. You have to find something you are good at doing. Something you are passionate about. It could be anything at all. I don't know what it is. Yours could be singing. Yours could be dancing. It could be a talent. You can. There's a book I've done, How to Turn Your Talent to Cash. It can be your talent. It could be your dancing skills. It could be, once you spot out a gift or talent God has given you, turn it to, see, to a skill. Turn it to a marketable skill. Yours could be communication, talking like me. Yours could be event planning. Yours could be comedy. It can give you money. Yours could be boutique, restaurant, anything at all. It can give you money. So find your land and till it. The one who walks, no, give me the other one, please. Okay, let me read this one. The one who walks with his hand will have plenty of food, but whoever chases fantasies lacks sense. Go back to the old King James and let me see. He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread. But he who follows frivolity, just follows any wild wind that is coming, is devoid of understanding. Proverbs 14 verse 23, quickly. Proverbs 14 23. In all labor there is profit. In all labor, there is profit. In all labor. And when we talk about labor, we're not talking about illegitimate businesses. Illegitimate business is not labor. It's digging your grave. That's what they call dignity in labor. God created labor. Labor is work. That's why in Nigeria, there's what they call National Labor Congress. Is it Nigerian Labor Nigerian Labor Congress? Another word for it can be Nigerian Workers Congress. 
So the Nigerian Labour Congress, which is NLC, is comprised of all the workers, civil servants and all those pub, whatever you call them. You know, that's a, the forum for them. That's their pressure group. Just like you have ASU, uh, NASU and the rest of them. So God recognizes labor. Labor is work. Anybody who calls you a laborer is right. A laborer is not somebody who is doing a minor work, as it were. In fact, there's no minor work anywhere. The only minor minds. There are no menial jobs, only menial sense. You can take the same minor things people are calling minor, the same thing people are calling minor, and make, <laughs> and make a paradise out of it. Do you know some people? I saw people, people who were doing uh, people who were those guys working at a uh, church site. All those people, they go and pick them from the street, pick them from the roadside, and all that, and then they just come and whatever. And I was looking at them one day when they were doing work. I said, Imagine somebody with sense now builds a company out of this, and then he's CEO. And maybe he calls it Crystal Builders Agency. And he's the CEO. He registers with the corporate affairs with 5,000. And then he now puts on the internet, do you have a degree in civil engineering or do you have no qualification, but you have something to do with building, you like to build, you have whatever or he say interview holds tomorrow so so and so time a powerful flyer put buildings on it put uh, brick layers all those they are messing you know what do you call those things D- those pans head pan design it well put chippings one side put sand put cement on it and then put it somewhere we add value when we build for you you know yeah, just put whatever it is and then share it anybody you see who wants to build share it and tell him are you looking for laborers who will mix your sand who will mix turn your chippings who is going to turn your days who is going to do your messenger he said i have a company that does it when you go to pick these boys on the road they charge you 40 naira to lay one block or 50 naira he said in our place we charge 25 naira and we have speed we can turn this sand and these chippings with speed. All you need is give, make sure we don't lack materials. If you go by the roadside, those guys are charging 50 naira. But in my own company, we are charging 25 naira per block. Who would not want to pay half of that money to get you? And then look, how you make money is not per work. It's per turnover. If somebody does 100 blocks for 50 naira, how much is that? That's 5,000. If you're able to achieve with lesser time 1,000 blocks for 30 naira, how much is that? That's 30,000. Who has made more money? The guy who is charging 30,000 has made more money. So how did he make more money? Turnover. Not the job now. It's a turnover. All you need is sense to just package this thing. And then find one or two people of like-mindedness. It's a company now. And then you go from place to place looking for sorry, looking for people who are developing buildings, people who are developing structures, and then you can apply. And then you come there with your team. If it's messing the one, you do the messing job, the laying of blocks and all that. You follow the prescription, do the and then with speed. If it is the mixing, that laborer's job where they do the mixing, you do it, and then they pay per whatever, they pay you and you pay your workers. And you have your own percentage. Depending on how you decide to package it. That's a job they call mania. But it's not mania. How do you see a duplex that is costing about 50 million, 70 million. And then you're looking down on the people who built it. As mania people. The problem is not the job. It's the way we think about it. The people who built it are thinking they are mania minded people. But the person living in it built it for about 70 million. 100 million. But you see, people who are doing the job are like nobodies. It's how they think. And then most of us, you need to learn how to take what people do poorly and do it professionally. I want to say it again. There is no minor or minor job. Just minor minds and sense. 
Let me also demystify de- de- this for some of you. Your problem has become religiosity. You know, when you feel I'm born again, you feel there are some things you can't do. You will be poor for life. See, can I tell you something? You see all these boys, let me use the word hustle, who are hustling out there, doing all kinds of things to survive. Do you know where they are getting up the principles from? From our kingdom. That hustling thing you see people do, working hard, is a kingdom principle. When I talk about the next point, you will see it. In all labor, there is profit. In all, in all. That means if you fry akara, there's profit in it. It's how you fry it. If you sell sobo, there's profit in it if you sell it well. Poor men drink sobo, rich men drink sobo. If you sell fruits, there's profit in it. Rich men eat fruits, poor men eat fruits. Let me tell you, when it comes to buying food, nobody does big man. The market is one place for everybody. Both the poor go to market. The rich also go to market. Painting is not a linear job. The problem is you feel, I am too spiritual to do that. That's why Satan is so spiritual at keeping you poor. You know you can get skills on how to repair phone you'll be a billionaire repairing phone from repairing phone you can start selling phone accessories from selling phone accessories you can start selling phones original ones people buy phone every day phone is one thing people keep buying there is in all labor there is profits but i do chatter leads only to poverty Show them that H or that translation. He said, but no, 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 the other translation quickly. He said, there is profit in all hard work, but endless talk, mm-hmm. especially for the ladies. Endless talk. Have you heard about that guy? Oh my God, that guy, Pastor, I almost fell down. If you see the guy's height, if you see how fine he is, oh my God, useless talk. Least only to poverty some guys are like that too they only talk about dreams without work say guy eh, in the next 20 years <laughs> any best who is looking down on me now doesn't know what he's looking down on stop that nonsense and go and work find something and get your life busy with it that's how we are sure of your next 20 years sit down there and be saying the next 20 years and there's nothing you're doing we're not sure of any 20 years Let me leave this one now because of time. Oh. Number four. Increase your network. Increase your network. Another definition of poverty is not having network. Net worth responds to network. If your network is powerful, you will not be poor. Increase your network. Increase your network. A man without money has no much problem like a man without friends. Listen to me. Relationship is the greatest need you have. No money. Can I say this again? Relationship, network is the greatest need you have. Not net worth. Because your net worth flows within network. Any person doing business knows that business is about people. You cannot sell until you have customers. What are bankers looking for? Not money, people. If you get people, you get money. What are network marketers looking for? People. If you get people, you get money. You're doing business. You don't have people patronizing you. You'll be poor. It's not the devil that patronizes you. It's human beings. It's not God that patronizes you. It's human beings. A man who is going to be financially successful must learn skills in the area of building network and managing them effectively. The more people you are able to serve, the more money you can get. 
the more people you're able to relate with, the more prosperous you can be. Let me tell you, build friends even with people that you don't have need of now because one day you may need them. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.